Ladies and gentlemen, bout number seven, Pro-Am rules, three by three minutes in the welterweight division. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, 25 years of age, standing 1.75 meters tall. He weighed in at 66,55 kilograms. A perfect Pro-Am record, five wins and no losses. Fighting out of Bushido and the Congo, please welcome Roberto Kitapala! Facing Kitabala and fighting out of the red corner, 23 years of age, standing 1.67 meters tall, weighing in at 66.8 kilograms, making his Pro-Am Muay Thai debut and fighting out of Chimani Mani in Zimbabwe, representing Thai Holics, please welcome Lewis Porcupine Mataya! <laughs>
number seven, Mataya versus Kiribala. This is one of the fights that I've been looking forward to because, you know, I get the paperwork, I get information, I can research who these guys are. So what you're looking at, Mataya making his debut at Pro-Am Rules, but man, he's got a rap sheet. So we're talking accolades that he's won. He's an MMA lightweight champion, Taekwondo black belt, UAE, UAE African Continental Pro white belt gold medal winner in 2019 against Kiribala. 5-0, and oh, fighting out of Bushido. He's got more experience. Size difference, slightly favoring Kitabala. What are we to expect from this fight other than fireworks? Look, I think Lewis is, is, um, is a, a very talented fighter. He's, he's unassuming, and he will catch you by surprise. He's quick. As a Taekwondo black belt, he's going to have fast legs, quick spinning attacks. He's going to be a little bit more unorthodox. So if you're used to fighting just a traditional Muay Thai style fight, coming up against a guy like Matuaya, might throw a span in the works. And I think also Kitabala has, a, we can see on his sheet, a bit of a karate background um, as a junior. I said he's also won some gold medals there, maybe at nationals or something like that. So he's also experienced at least in his striking arts and maybe being quite aware of where the strikes are coming from. So that should be an interesting one. As the two fighters face up for the opening stands, around number one headed your way, TFP2, the recruitment Round bout one. number seven. Top. Absolutely action-packed all afternoon. This one is no exception. Here we go. From what I've seen when Lewis is fighting in the past, I've seen him fight some MMA fights. He's traditionally quite a slow starter, and then he gets really explosive out of nowhere. And that kind of catches the guys by surprise. You know, three rounds, three minutes, you don't have a lot of time to start slowly. This isn't like the pros where it's five of three and the two that open are generally the feeling out. You know, you've got to kind of hit the gas immediately. Otherwise, it could get taken away from you before you've really even started. 100% Dave, you're 100% right. Um, I also think, you know, the change of style might be a little bit tricky for him. Trying to adapt to, to the Muay Thai style where the scoring works completely different to like Taekwondo and MMA. Let's see how he adjusts. There we saw Kitabala cracking on with a kick up to the ribs and again he ends with that left kick under the shoulder Lewis has got a good eye he saw that attack coming a mile away got out of the way nicely very calm and composed wow he's going with the question mark if he's bringing out the tools already Kitabala could be bringing out the best in Lewis Mataya Lewis Mataya small compact very, very light on his feet. He's going in with that oblique knee attack. Not a lot of the time do you see that in Muay Thai, do you? Yeah, you kind of see it more as a teep to the thigh than, than that a straight attack on the knee. I think that straight attack on the knee is just, in my opinion, it's a dirty strike. I don't like it. Um, but it's really, yeah, it's effective in, in certain sports. And I think with uh, Muay Thai, you use it more as a, a teep to the thigh, teep to the hip. Just keep your opponent away, take him off balance a little bit. He's also changing stance a lot, so I think he's using that little teep as like just keeping his front leg out and then switching it up and then throwing his big kicks. I tell you what, I like the look of Lewis Mataya. He looks so composed. He looks like he's full of tricks. And then he goes and lands a thunderous shot like that to the ribcage out of nowhere. We're also seeing a lot of that karate styling from Kitabala. You know, he's standing, he's very bouncy, he's moving backwards. So I think that's also something to be aware of is that his style is not so come forward. So, you know, he needs to maybe work on his, his game just for more tire styling because that's what the, the judges are going to look at. Yeah, there's not a lot of power in his kicks. He's more flicking it than, than putting some shin behind it. He's not turning his hips a lot. So it's not as effective. I think Lewis is landing some, some heavy strikes. You saw that one low kick when he threw the low kick, he actually fell over because the low kick didn't have enough pace. And I'll tell you what, just by watching Lewis Mataya, I'm fascinated with what he's going to do next. Is that a kind of style of fascination that can draw the judges in so that you only really pay attention to what he is doing as opposed to any of the good work that his opponent might be doing, which is going unnoticed because he's not looking like he's going to do something special? Yeah, Dev, I think you're definitely right. But he's doing it because he's, he's commanding the presence of the ring. You know, he's, 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 he's got the, the center of the ring. He's controlling the pace of the fight. You know, it's all about him. Right, who's on judges' duty for this particular stand? That's me this time. Carl Bergman, how to, you got it? I'm giving it to Mataya just because, again, you know, they come forward pressure, landing bigger strikes. I don't think Kitabala did a bad job. He landed a few himself, but as we were saying earlier, it just doesn't have any of that impact. I mean, he's getting buckled on the kick, so his defense isn't as strong. Um, he needs to do a little bit more come forward and a higher work rate maybe in the second round. 
And you know the wonderful thing about this fight is that these guys are still young in their careers. It's a 23-year-old versus a 25-year-old. There's ample miles left to go down that road of professionalism in terms of their fighting sports. And I hope that they stick it out with Muay Thai because, you know, African Muay Thai is experiencing this rejuvenation thanks to Thaiholics Fight Promotions, what we're doing for you today, what we did in TFP1, what we're going to do in TFP3. We're bringing a German team out here. Muay Thai is alive and kicking, yes. and here we go Check with round number back. two. The guy's taking a little bit of time getting all the equipment out of the ring, all the splash buckets and the splash trays. Try this, Are we to believe that they're buying some time as opposed to needing the time? No, I don't think Nick is that type of, type, that type of guy. He doesn't need to. I think... Um, you know, when you've got all the new okay. equipment and Minus new tools, it takes a little bit of time to adjust using them. So getting that big Jump. that splash tray out, in and out quite efficiently, is, 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 takes some time to get used to. And in this case, we had both teams doing it. It wasn't like anyone was trying to score any extra time. And neither guys really looked like they needed it anyway. You know, the guys look like in really good condition. They look nice and fit. I like Lewis's balance. He got his leg caught in the last, in the last round. Couldn't get swept. Nice pace. Shuffling the feet, Muhammad Ali style. Here we go, round number two. But you know, again, it was some pretty good work that Kitabalo did. He caught a good kick from a tie, but he just can't get him off his base. Uh, Lewis is doing a great job controlling the ring. He's got nice power low kicks. He's, he's definitely in control of this fight. Big calf kicks that are going in from Lewis Mataya. And very unorthodox, the hands. I think a lot of the time you're expecting those hands to come forward, and as he's busy reaching forward to the hand, a big kick comes. So I think that's deceptive as well, and that's a big part of the art as well. I mean, something like that, standing strikes to the knee. It's just something you don't see very often as well. Would it be remiss for me to say that a way that Kitabala could possibly work his way back into this fight is more of a boxing approach than what he's trying to do with the feet? I, I think I think a boxing approach wouldn't be a bad idea, especially when the guy's got a heavy leg attack. But you have to go forward. He's not going forward. He's moving backwards. You're not going to throw very powerful shots going backwards unless you're going to walk into a, uh, a left hook, which Lewis is too sharp for that. He's not going to make a dumb mistake and rush. So if there's going to be anything, Kitabala needs to really push some pressure going forward. He's got to set up his kicks with his hands, which he's not doing. He's throwing his kicks completely naked. It's, you can read it a mile away. We are being treated to a striking clinic here by Lewis Matar in many respects. It's not that Kitabala is completely outgunned. He does have the size advantage. He's got the experience advantage at the level, but he's not fighting like it. It's a nice little elbow that was just missed by Lewis. That was something that ended up as nothing, a kind of a waste of time. Desperation, Devin, is desperation. You know, guys don't know what to do. They got no, they can't pose any threats or get any, ask any questions of Lewis. So it comes up with something spinning, and just completely stupid in my opinion. Didn't end up pulling the trigger. Matai saw it coming a while away. Was able to step out. And here we go back again. I think also being the ranger fighter, Kitabala needs to stand his ground as Lewis is coming in and maybe put some stiff jabs in. He's not really putting his body behind it. He's, he's doing a lot of in and out, which again is basically his karate background coming to the, to the front. Credit to Kitabala. I mean, he has got that spinning leg kick scouted that Lewis has attempted to throw on multiple occasions. He managed to get out of the way. So his faculties are with him. It's just that he has no answer for seeing the lower leg attack that Lewis Mataya is bringing out. Look, look Lewis it hasn't tagged him to the head pretty, pretty hard, but he's landing hard kicks to the body and the hard kicks to the leg. So he's definitely tucking, oh, weakening his opponent quite a, quite a bit. Just a little bit of after the bell love. Don't know where Mataya was walking off to. He quickly got called back to the corner by Nick Radley. Yeah, just a little show of dominance there to show that he wasn't put off by that kick after the bell. So, Carl, how you got it? Yeah, again, I've got that 10-9 to Mataya. Just the whole round was coming forward. You know, uh, Kitabala was landing some good strikes, but they're not effective strikes in Muay Thai. You need to be landing power shots, you know, the significant strikes. You can't outpoint your opponent, necessarily. Lewis looks nice and fresh. He's got a lot of cardio. He's a very fit fighter. That goes with the, the, the composure and the experience. You know, he is, is definitely a, a, tough, a tough fight for anybody in this division. Breathing through his nose. There's not even a sign of his lips opening there. 
He's not even answering questions. I mean, he's just all business right now. Both of them getting ice to the head and the shoulders, reviving the fighters. Round number three, here we go. We've got Lewis Matai pretty much up two to zip here in about number seven, TFP2, the recruitment. Kitabala, what is he going to do this round? Because, man, he's fallen behind. He's tried everything he can. What is it now, just end the fight standing up? Well, he's got to try to go for a knockout. If he doesn't try to go for a knockout, he's not used to winning this fight. Big start. strike. And that starts the game, it's going forward. He can't be on the back foot right now. He needs to throw the whole kitchen sink here. I'd also like to see Lewis open up the taps here. It looks like to me he's got another gear or two that he hasn't engaged and he can switch it on if he wants to. Hopefully, he heard me and is going to do just that. I'd like to see him throw some hands first, you know, get, get Kitabala thinking about his hands. Right now he's just throwing leg attacks. It's becoming easy to read. If he throws some good punches behind it, I think or well, before he kicks, it'll, it'll be a lot more effective. Yeah, it's not all reckless abandon by Kitabal, uh, by Lewis Mataya. You know, he's throwing these kicks, but he's also very cautious of what the bigger man could do back to him. And we've seen some nice flashy things from Kitabala as well, that double jumping kick where he goes from left to right. Oh, that's a nice stiff jab, eh? And as he jumped in, he's eating a big shot. And a kick to the ribcage. That landed. Kitabala says, I'm still here, guys. I'm still a threat. It slowed Lewis down just a little bit. I'd like to see Lewis keep the pressure on. He landed a nice stiff left jab as he got rushed. He needs to take more advantage of that. You know, he definitely got his partner hurt or his opponent hurt. And he needs to take advantage. Both guys' toughness has really impressed me here. You know, it's one of those fights that could go either way. But I kind of feel like it is Mattia who is the one who is most likely to score a knockout, but he's not engaging that third and fourth gear. And you can hear that from the corners as well. Every time you hear that, oh, he, that's a nice big clean strike being landed. And I think we hear that mostly from Lewis's corner at the moment. Let's reflect on that, that noise from the corner. How much is that influencing judges? Is it just for that purpose, to remind the judges, hey, my guy just did something if you didn't see it? I think it's also reactive. So the corner is like actually enjoying the fight. They're enjoying that you're landing, listening. And then it's for them to also let you know that you're doing the right thing. Listen, Muay Thai is a very expressive sport, you know. When, you, when you're training, when you're fighting, your coaches are always making the all types of noises, edging you on, you know, whether you're doing well or you're doing badly, they're, they're pushing you, you know, that's very expressive. Good body shot by Kitabala, responded to by Lewis Mataya. He's now stuck in the corner and Mataya is marching on. Final 30 seconds, time for the guys to suit it up. See if there's anything left in the tank. It just doesn't feel like Kitabala actually wants to finish this fight. Oh. He's quite happy just to survive. That was a killer blow straight to the stomach. It looked like heel on stomach from Lewis Mataya. Kitabala ate that one. I think Mataya kind of fell back into his Taekwondo roots, a lot, of, a lot of flashy kicks. You know, I think if he was more simple, more effective like that, that left kick to the body now, I think he would have had a lot more success. Stop. Great fight by Lewis, so very nice to compose. Definitely got this one in the bag. Yeah, I also gave that last round to him, so I think he's got the one in the bag. Ladies and gentlemen, three rounds of action takes us to the judges' scorecards. Your winner coming by way of unanimous decision victory, Lewis Mattel!